Hello everyone. Every once in a while we get one of those requests that's just kind of unnecessary and yet we still have to do them. Today's no different. Today we're going to be taking a look at a footer for a website. Now for some reason people seem to think, or at least the, the customers and clients I've had to deal with seem to think, that putting a copyright notice in your footer means that your website is either more secure or that people can't just control A and control C it to, to copy it. Um, so this is like a pretty frequent occurrence where someone will request this uh, and then you unfortunately have to once again figure out how to center a div. Now in this case we're going to be using bootstrap so it's a little bit easier for us but there's a couple tricks you can use. Uh, it basically just boils down to making sure all of the elements on your page have a height and then you can force this to sit where it needs to. So to do this we'll just start with a new uh, Rails app, we'll say Rails new video. And we're not going to be using the dash J ES build dash C bootstrap for this just because you, you might not have that. Uh, so instead, we're just going to be using the uh, bootstrap CDN here because I feel like it's the most accessible way where if you have bootstrap, you'll have this set up. So we'll just go ahead CD into our video, run a code dot, open this up in VS code, and then we can quickly set this up. Again, it's not really something I personally worry about because like if someone's going to copy my website, they're going to do it either way and I don't want to have to sue people. So like there's no point for me. Uh, but for some reason, people insist on having this, this copyright notice. Uh, I do find it funny, though, that like, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's finally falling out of style, maybe a little bit where we don't need to have, a, 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 you know, the equivalent of saying no copyright infringement intended in a video description because that's about as, as useful as it is. Uh, but okay, we're gonna come over to getting started. I'll have a link to this in the video description. We'll come over to our application. Let me hit Control Plus a couple times. We can come into our views, our application.html.erb. We'll paste in the CDN for the CSS. And then we wanna grab the JavaScript as well. Paste that in. Although ideally we would wanna put this maybe at the bottom. So below the yield inside the body, something like that. We can now go ahead and run a Rails G scaffold post, give each post a title and a body of type text. This is just so we have multiple pages to test with. And now let's do a Rails G stimulus and we'll call this the copyright stimulus controller. Now, the reason why we're creating a copyright controller is because the other thing that uh, they frequently want you to do that's kind of annoying is to keep the date up to date. Uh, otherwise, it, it's not an official copyright footer, right? So we're just going to be using a little bit of JavaScript to just grab the current day for that, cheese it a little bit, and call it a day. I'm going to go ahead and start our server now and come over to our app, our config, and our routes.rb because we're going to be setting the root of the application to be that post controller. Oops, and that index action. So that'll just hopefully give us a home page to work with. Let's come over to localhost port 3000 and let's run our pending migrations. And now we have our posts. So let's come back over to our application.html.erp and let's do a little bit of setup real quick. So the first thing I want to do is grab the uh, body and I want to try to add a class to it. So there's a couple classes here. It's just going to add the flex, the flex column and the height of 100. Uh, generally not a fan of having to throw in 30 different classes on something as opposed to just one. But for the sake of this, we're going to be using the bootstrap classes. Now, this won't necessarily give us the results we're looking for. So if I just put like the word test down here, you'll see the test is still appearing below that link. So the other thing I want to do is wrap the yield tag inside of a flex shrink zero. And we're just going to put all of the content that's in the yield inside of a main tag. So if we now have this test down here, it's still not being pushed down to the bottom. So the other thing we can try and do is out, because it's outside of the main, we can actually just wrap this in a footer itself. So we'll go ahead and do that. So this is an actual footer element. We'll close the footer and we can try to save that. You'll see this now gives it a bit of a background just because of the BG dash light from bootstrap right here gives us a bit of a height, but it's still not being pushed down to the bottom. So what we can do now is let's try to at least get the test to be centered a little bit, which we can do by wrapping it inside of a container. So this will cause it to move over a little bit. Looks like that. Now, maybe we want to ensure that this isn't uh, as, as vibrant as the rest of the text on the page. It looks kind of cringe when it's this dark color like everything else. For that, we can throw a span around this with the class of text slash muted. We can go ahead and close the span. So that takes care of that. It's now a little bit gray. 
Now what I'd like to do is make sure that the, uh, the current day is being shown in here. So instead of having the word test right here, we can throw in another span, which will be a little bit bigger. And what this span is gonna do, it's gonna have an ID of current year, although this is not necessary. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. It's really just gonna have a data-controller equal to copyright. You can go ahead and close this span. So this is gonna be what we use in our stimulus controller to access the uh, part of the code that we want to modify. After that, we'll just throw in a space. So after the closing span here for the copyright notice, we'll throw in a space and then we'll just say your company name, whatever this might be, I don't know, Dean and LLC. And then we'll just say all rights reserved. Go ahead and save that, come over here and refresh. So here you can see it says Dean and LLC, all rights reserved, but we don't have that copyright symbol. To do that, we're gonna be using a little bit of JavaScript and a stimulus controller, which is why we bound it to this data dash controller. We can now come up to that controller we made earlier inside of app JavaScript controllers and copyright controller. And then inside of the copyright controller, we really only have to do two things. The first one is we're gonna do a const for the current year, set it equal to a new date dot get full year. We can then go ahead and call this dot element dot enter HTML is equal to, and then just throw in the copyright symbol right there. So this will hopefully grab the uh, span right here and it'll say, all right, whatever's in here, replace it with the uh, copyright symbol space, the current year. So if we now come over here and we refresh, you'll see copyright 2023, Dean and LLC, all rights reserved. So we have that, it's not being put down to the bottom, but we'll worry about that in a second. What I wanna do now is instead of having this footer here, I want to extract this out and I'll just say render a partial, which we'll just put inside of layout slash footer for now, I guess. You can come over to our layouts, right click new file, underscore footer dot html dot erb, and we'll paste this in. So that should automatically format it. The behavior should still be the same and we're good to go. So now what I wanna do is come back over to our application.html.erb and I wanna do some clever stuff here to get this to like fit properly. First thing we're gonna do is up here on the HTML, we're gonna give this a class with a uh, h-100. Go ahead and save that, refresh. Now you can already see this is being pushed down to the bottom. Now if we come in here and we do a new post, test and case, and I'm just going to copy the case and spam it a bunch of times. And then I'm gonna hit Control A and Control C again to paste that a bunch of times. So we get a bunch of stuff that's still not long enough. So I'm gonna come down to the bottom here. And I'm just gonna paste this a couple of times. There we go. So now if we come down here, we have this footer being set. Uh, now the other thing I just real quick wanna talk about is uh, we have this main around the uh, entire content, but it's all being pushed to the, the edges of the screen. Again, of course, because we're using Bootstrap, we can do a dot .container, tab it over, wrap the entire yield inside of a container if you're so inclined, and that gives you a bit more to work with here. The last thing you might want to consider is uh, maybe doing like a header or like a nav bar from Bootstrap or something. Uh, and you can just throw that up top here. I'm not going to cover doing it because I mean, it, it's ultimately up to you. Just come over to get bootstrap.com, search for nav bar, uh, and then you open this in a new tab and you can pretty much just grab any one of these and copy and paste it in if, if you want to. Uh, and then you can customize it from there. The reason why I don't necessarily like doing this is just, you're pretty much gonna rip most of these out. Like you're probably not gonna have a search bar in, in your nav bar. You're gonna get rid of your, like disabled your drop downs and stuff like that. Uh, but if you wanna keep them, you just do the same thing we did here with the render partial, paste it in, and you just replace this with like the nav bar. And then inside of a nav bar, we can come up here, uh, right click new file. We can say underscore nav bar .html.erb. And then you can just like copy one of these and paste it in. This might not work right just because of how we're using the CDN, uh, but we'll go ahead and we'll test this out. Uh, so that should be inside of the nav bar. Let's come over to our application, make sure that this is rendering layout slash nav bar. Uh, and there we go. We have a nav bar now. Has the drop down and stuff as well. Uh, so yeah, you, you can now scroll down here and you'll see this. You can change the nav bar to be sticky if you would like. Uh, it should be in here under like, I don't know, sticky. Uh, but you are gonna wanna make sure that the browser fully supports it. Bootstrap can be a little bit weird here, uh, but it really depends on, on what you're doing. Uh, and then you just, yeah, you just go from there. So that should hopefully give you a working footer that has your copyright stuff in the bottom. Again, I don't think you need this for any website really, but uh, at the end of the day, 
Uh, we all have to deal with what the customer wants and not necessarily what we want uh, because that's what pays the bills. <laughs> But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Again, I don't expect this to get a whole bunch of views. Uh, I just thought it was something that like I've run into a couple times. I'm getting tired of having to solve this problem. So hopefully I can solve it for one person out there. Uh, and yeah, that's going to do it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully I will see you in the next video.